chapter selling random events. Okay, we're going to talk about a couple different types of probability distributions. The most important one is going to be the normal distribution because we're going to use it for chapter seven and eight also. Okay, so we're also talking about the difference between a discrete and a continuous variable. Sorry about that. Okay. Um, Oops, I think I skipped a slide. There we go. So um, probability models come in several forms, okay? We're mostly going to spend a little bit of time on the uniform distribution. That's mostly to help us understand the normal distribution better, okay? But they can have all kinds of shapes. Okay? In that they're going to talk about a probability distribution function, and it's either a table or a graph that gives all the outcomes of an experiment and what their probability are. First, let's talk about what's the difference between a discrete variable and a continuous variable. A discrete variable, it has values that you can actually list or count. Such if I ask you how many classes you've, you've taken, right? You're going to say one, two, three, the roll on a die. Those are examples of discretes, of, of a discrete variable, okay? A continuous variable is, it can be any value in between a range of values. So how long it takes you to finish your exam, if I talk about your exact weight or even your exact height, those would be continuous variables because your exact weight can be any weight over a given area. Like you might actually say you weigh like 150 pounds, but that's because you round to the nearest pound. Your exact weight is something much more accurate than that. Okay, so let's classify each of the following as discrete or continuous. So if you talk about the length of your thumb, is that going to be continuous or discrete? So you should actually pause the video at, after each of these and think about them, and then we'll talk about the answers. Okay, so the length of your thumb is similar to your weight, as in you can measure it, but you're actually, when you get done, you're rounding it off to a certain length. So you probably to the nearest half or quarter of an inch or so. So your length of your thumb is actually going to be a continuous variable because it can take on any value in there. Okay? But if you talk about the number of children in your family, that's going to be discrete because you can't have like half a child, right? It's either going to be one, two, three, or four. Same thing with the number of devices in the household. So a lot of things that you have to count are going to be discrete variables. Okay, sodium concentration in the bloodstream, again, that's a measurement. So it's going to be continuous because it can take many values over a given range. Okay, so first let's look at discrete probability distributions. Okay, so a lot of times we're going to call these PDFs, and that stands for probability distribution function, not the type of file that you have on your computer. Okay, you can display them either with a table or with a graph. First, we'll talk about displaying them with a table. Okay, so you have either two rows or you can actually write it as two columns. The, the examples I have are with two columns. The first displays all the possible outcomes. The second displays the probabilities for these outcomes. So like for a dice roll, Right? There's, if you have a regular six-sided dice and it's a fair dice, meaning each side is equally likely, here's your outcomes. You could have a roll one through a six, and each one has the same chance of occurring, one-sixth. Okay? If I roll two dice and look at the sum of their, the dots on the dice, right? the sum can be anywhere from a two to a twelve. Okay? And each one is not equally likely to occur because you should realize that seven, there's many ways you can get a roll of a seven, such as a two and a five, a six and a one, or a four and a three, and okay, versus the only way to get a two is with rolling both ones. Okay, so um, there's a probability of each of these different sums. Okay, this is the probability if you buy a raffle ticket. So it looks like it costs you five dollars to buy a raffle ticket. Right, so you would lose five dollars, and the chance of you doing that is 98.5 percent of the time. So in other words, not very many people win, so they lose their five dollars. Okay, the grand prize must have been a thousand dollars because you're losing the five dollars you bet, but you're going to get a thousand dollars. So you, your outcome would be a gain of 995 dollars, right? And that's only 0.5 percent of the time. Do that. Okay, and if you notice, if I add up all these probabilities, all of them actually equal 1. Okay, so if we're going to calculate some discrete probabilities from the distribution table, okay, first let's look at what's the probability that x is between 5 and 7, and we're going to include both the 5 and the 7. So you're rolling two dice, you want to know what's the probability that your sum is either 5, 6, or 7. So in this case, I'm looking at the three outcomes, 5, 6, or 7, 
All I have to do is, in, is add up the 436, the 536, and the 636, and I get 1536. Okay. But you notice the next one, I have the same numbers, the 5 and the 7, but I don't have the equal sign. So now what's the probability of getting x being between 5 or 7, not including the 5 or the 7? In this case, my only outcome I actually can get is a 6. I just read the table over here. The probability of rolling a 6 is 536. Okay. Notice the difference. I have two different answers depending on whether or not I have an equal sign. And that we'll look at that again when I have a continuous distribution. So here's some examples of graphs of probability distributions, again, that are, dis are discrete. Okay. Here they did gender distribution. If you remember back in Chapter 1, we talked about coding data. So in this case, they coded it. Zero was the female. So we can see there was about 40% females and about 60% males. Okay. Over here, I have Amazon.com ratings. And when you rate something, you either give it a 1 through a 5. Right? You can't give it like 2.5. Okay, so these aren't averages, these are actually what people rated, the actual rating of it. So, you know, so they're just lines going up, right? So almost 30% gave the, whatever it was, a one star, and about 20% gave it five stars. Okay, um, sometimes probably the distribution functions for discrete data could be a formula. So in this case, you notice that formula looks very complicated. I'm just giving you an example of how it does not always represent it in a table or a graph. Sometimes it's represented in a formula. I would not expect you to ever be able to do work with this formula. It's just an example of how they can actually get very complicated. Okay, then let's look at continuous data and probability distribution functions. Most of these are going to represent with a curve. So here I have a curve, and if I want the probability that you're between 0 and 2, I'm actually going to look at the area that's under this curve. Okay, this actually involves integral calculus, which we are not doing. We're going to be using tables or the computer to figure out what our areas are. Okay, the total area under this entire curve has to be 1, and the curve cannot lie below the x-axis. Okay, but we're actually now going to be looking at area underneath the curve, for continuous data when you look at its distribution function. And again, normally it's going to be drawn as a curve. Okay, so this is an example of a uniform distribution. Okay, so this curve here, which actually is this line, okay, it shows the probability distribution function for the time to wait for a bus that comes every 12 minutes. Okay, so first thing, if it comes every 12 minutes, your waiting time has to be between 0 and 12. Okay, because you can't wait 13 minutes if it's coming every 12 minutes. Remember the area under the curve has to be 1. So this has a distance of 12, right? So if you remember the area of a rectangle is its length times its height. So I need 12 times some height that gives me 1. So 12 times 1 twelfth gives you 1, and 1 twelfth written as a fraction is that point zero eight three three. So that's how this number was determined, because it has to be one twelfth so that the area and the whole rectangle ends up being one. Okay? So we want to find the probability that you have to wait between five and ten minutes. So the first thing we want to do is actually shade in that area that we're looking at. So that's the red rectangle that I have. Okay? Now we just got to find the area of this rectangle. Remember the area of a rectangle is its length times its height or base times height. Right, has a length of 5, so we're going to take that 5 times its height, which is 0 0.08333. Okay, so the probability that we're between, we have to wait between 5 and 10 minutes, is the 5 that's its height times, I'm sorry, the 5 that's its width times the 0.833 that's its height. So about 41.65% of the time, we'd have to wait between 5 and 10 minutes for the bus to show up. Okay. Um, so now let's look at the same problem, okay, and we want the probability that you have to wait exactly five minutes. Okay, so again, if we shade in the area, oh, I have a mistake here. That should actually only be a line. All you end up having is just a line, and let me shade it here, and I'll make it red. So if you want to shade in the area, if we're at exactly five minutes, that's actually going to be just that line right there. What's the area of a line? Well, it has a height of 0 0.0833, but what's the area? I mean, what's its width? Its width is 0, because a line actually has one dimension. 
So ignore my red box, okay? The, height, the probability x equals 5 is base times its height, but its, its base is 0, so it's actually the probability I'd wait exactly 5 minutes is 0, okay? So if I, let's go back to the original problem, which we're looking at the now the rectangle. Does the probability that x less than, equal, less than or equal to x less than or equal to 10, the probability that you have to wait between 10 and 5 minutes, including 5 and 10, is that going to be the same as if you don't have the equal sign? Okay, if you have a continuous distribution, and the answer is yes, okay, because each of these endpoints have an area of zero, okay, so they end up being the same for continuous. Remember, for the discrete, they were not the same because you could actually count. So this, for the discrete, it did not include the endpoints, so they end up being two different answers. But for a continuous distribution, they're the same. Okay, that's because the area of the line, because that's all you're looking at by not including the 5, the area of that line is 0. Okay, so that's it, and then on the next video we'll start talking about the normal model, which is another continuous distribution.